Okay, sweet. So we're the Chicken Coop Project, uh, going now under the name Chick Double E N Wings. Um, and my name's Ryan. I'm Ben. I'm Yin. And uh, this is our project. Uh, so first we're going to start off by talking about the hardware and the PCBs. Um, one of the biggest things that we've done since the last time I think we spoke to you was that we decided to use uh, Cat6 Ethernet cables in order to um, route power and signals to all of our um, supporting devices. Uh, because for our chicken counter, we have an IR receiver and an IR transmitter and then RFID modules and all of these kind of have to be in separate physical locations. Um, so in order to do this we use the Ethernet cables in order to route the signals because um, you can just plug them in super easily and they're replaceable. You can use different cables um, and then they also allow because they're protected um, with uh, they have a protective outer layer so it can protect it from the chickens you know snapping and cutting wires. Um, on our boards, on both our environmental monitor and our chicken uh, counter, we have a PSOC 5 and a PSOC 4. Uh, the PSOC 5 is being used to store data for um, use um, for later, for looking at it later. Um, and then the PSOC 4 is used to make um, data available via Bluetooth low energy. Um, and on our environmental monitor board, we're using um, temperature and humidity sensors as well as light sensors in order to uh, collect this, the ambient da data for our devices. So for, actually can you go back really quick? For all of these we used uh, hard plastic encasings. For the ambient environmental sensor we used a clear case so that light could get through and also for our infrared trip sensors we used a clear case because the infrared can see through while well at the same time keeping a lot of the debris that's in the chicken coop out. Uh, for our motherboard and our RFID sensors, we just use stock hard plastic cases from uh, Radio Shack that we, we cut so that the RJ45 sockets could stick out uh, and then we weatherproofed the joints. Um, so, our firmware was written to collect data and make it via available via BLE and our SD card. And to start, like, so our, our environmental monitor is very simple how it works. It basically will stay in a standby mode. And then every, um, currently we have it collecting data every 10 seconds. So this could be um, changed depending on um, how often you wanted to collect data. And then as soon as it collects data every 10 seconds, it makes that immediately available to the Bluetooth phone app and stores it onto the SD card. And for our chicken counter, it works um, by, uh, it basically stays in standby until it is triggered by a, um, one of the IR trips or the RFID. And then it has a timer that, allow that waits for it to, uh, um, see to see if it gets the other IR or RFID counting to know whether it'll count up or down. But then if it doesn't see any of the other sequence of events, then it knows after that certain amount of time that um, that the chicken like something happened to cause it to trip without the chicken trying to walk in so it clears everything and doesn't knows not to count. We also created a MATLAB utility for graphing the temperature, humidity, and light data. So for a phone uh, application, we is like really simple to use. Like, since we have like two device, like main device, like environmental monitor device and the chicken counter device, so like I made the the phone app would be like easy once you click. Like you can select your device and then it would like scan the device and then you press to read and it shows like all the data, like live data during the last one. And then you click menu to like. To disconnect the device, and you can able to like sense another device as well. Yeah, go back to the main page. Um, so here's just I think we showed you this before, but we took uh, from our live data tests. We took um, uh, data for this is our humidity plot. Um, it shows humidity over like the 12 hour period that we're looking at. Um, if you mind going to the next one. Um, and this shows light over time. It was taken overnight and then for a couple hours the next morning, but was mostly inside. So that's kind of why you see mostly uh, basically zero light. And then the, the sharp spikes are when I took it outside. 
Um, and then here's the temperature plot. Um, it changes basically based on what time it was and uh, whether I was inside or outside with the device because I was moving it to different locations to see what happened. Um, and this is our chicken, sample chicken counting data from our live test. Um, it records the current number of chickens in the coop that it has counted, as well as the ID of the chicken that has walked through, and it timestamps it. So explain the experiment that you did. Um, so what we did was we went out to the chicken coop and we installed our, our device um, and uh, watched as chickens walked in and out and recorded a uh, it recorded um, which chicken was going in or out and recorded what number, like how many chickens had gone in or out, assuming they had a tag on it. With any false negatives, like uh, or false positives? Uh, Not false positives. The, the timing took care of that pretty well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple more after this, but. Let's do that video last. Okay. So possibilities for the future. Um, one thing we want to improve is non-entry detection. Some of the chickens uh, will not make up their mind whether or not they want to go in, and they'll wait around in the entryway, which really uh, can confuse our sensors because they don't know, is there something coming in, going out? I mean, there'll be multiple chickens hanging out there too. So we have basic non-entry detection, but we want to improve upon uh, having a sensor that could make sure it knew whether or not anything had actually come in or out. Part of that is the second RFI or uh, infrared trip, uh, which we have board, the board for and the software for. We just didn't have enough cases ordered to put it in during our test. Um, another thing we want to consider is a higher frequency tag and reader combination. The 125 kilohertz is really commonly used in, in industry for poultry and livestock. The issue is it has a fairly short range, which for a lot of people isn't an issue. With cattle ear tags, they have a handheld reader, um, and a lot of fish, fish readers also use either 125 or 134 kilohertz readers, uh, but those are much more expensive because they have better encasements, uh, which makes it easier to read from. One major issue we had was read range. And so there are a few different ways we can prove that with our current frequency readers, but the two methods we looked at were both very complex and very expensive. Uh, and so there might be, it might be worth looking into higher frequency tags which get a higher read range. Um, and then improving encasement resistance. Fortunately, the, uh, the cases lasted a day. Uh, they were waterproofed and held together very well and bolted in and I was still amazed at how much damage they sustained uh, after 24 hours. Uh, when we put them in, they were not submerged in poop, and when we pulled them out, they were completely submerged in poop. Uh, and I got most of it out, but you might not want to touch that. Uh, they also managed to... So why did you put it in the poop? Why did we put it in the poop? In the first place. Oh, no, we didn't put it in poop in the first place. Uh, Wait, wait, this is the... So RFID were put underneath where the chickens would walk. And that was fine, right? Uh, that was, yeah, everything worked fine. It was just covered in poop. Um, <laughs> and it, well, the big deal, well, in this case, when I took it out, uh, after a day, they had managed, I mean, that level, I did not expect them to be fully submerged in poop. And it got, <laughs> yeah, it got in there, and there was a little bit of liquid still in, in the cases, which could cause an issue over long-term deployment. Um, further encasing, we didn't epoxy the cases. I didn't epoxy the cases because that would be impossible to take apart, and we wanted to have a demonstration ready. So further case improvement. So now I think we can go to the video showing, showing a project. Do you ever have trouble losing your chickens, keeping track of them as they move in and out of their coop? Do you ever wonder how your chickens feel inside of the coop? Well, now you can have chick double E N wings. Unlike your chickens, let your counting technology soar. <laughs> Team Chick Double E N Wings has developed an inexpensive solution to your counting problems. 
We use the industry standard EM4305 radio frequency identification tags to track each chicken as they move inside and out of the coop. Our tracking system uses modulated 38 kilohertz infrared technology to detect the direction the chicken is moving. We have also created an ambient environmental condition monitoring station that watches the humidity, temperature, and light inside the coop at all times. So you can analyze the exact movement behavior of your chickens relative to their environment. All this information will be sent to a Bluetooth low energy to smartphone as well as and secure digital memory card for a long time tracking. see we currently have zero chickens in the coop and um, so chicken one decides to go in we now have one chicken in the coop now chicken two he's buddies with chicken one so he also enters the coop and we have two chickens chicken three decides to copy chicken one chicken three uh, and chicken two he follows them we have 30 chickens in the coop now chicken one he's not a big fan of chicken three so he decides to leave and so he leaves the coop to go outdoors again. So you can see we have two chickens in the coop. Now the other guys don't really like being in there without chicken one, so they both also decide to leave the coop. And as you can see, we now only have one chicken. Chicken three is the only one left, so he leaves as well. And we're back down to zero chickens in the coop. Mm -hmm.